Hello class, welcome to this lesson on 2-4. We're gonna be talking about regression lines, all about regression lines today. All right, so uh, what do we wanna do? We want to uh, first be able to predict values of a response variable using regression lines. We wanna be able to interpret the slope and the y-intercept of a regression line and computing the least squares regression line for a given scatter plot. So the learning goals are to be able to make predictions using these regression lines, keeping in mind the dangers of extrapolation, calculate and interpret residuals, interpret the slope and y-intercept of these lines, and find the equation. All right, so we need to know what a regression line is. We're going to briefly discuss extrapolation and also introduce int int interpolation, which is kind of like the flip side of that. Residuals, y-intercept, and slope and least squares regression line. All right, so in the previous lesson, we were able to calculate the strength of the linear relationship between two quantitative variables using the correlation coefficient r. Now remember that this relationship for r, if r is a strong, if r is a big value, meaning close to one or negative one, then the relationship was considered to be strong, a strong linear relationship. Remember that r can only be between negative 1 and 1, including negative 1 and 1. So it could be, most of the time, it's a decimal, like 0.5 or 0.8. And the stronger and the closer it is to 1 or negative 1, the stronger it is. The closer it is to 0, the weaker the linear relationship between the two variables. Now, this correlation coefficient r was based off of how close the points were to the linear trend or to the line. So if the points were really clustered to, uh, and really close to the line, then we knew that the relationship was strong. And if the points were scattered throughout and far, far apart and away from the line, the linear trend, then we knew that it was a weak linear relationship. Now this linear trend is often called the regression line and it can be used to model the relationship and make predictions. So this regression line, like we said, it describes how response variable Y changes as the explanatory variable X changes. Now the formula for this regression line is given by y hat equals a plus bx. So y, uh, this y with the symbol on top is y hat. And it's a plus bx. Now this should kind of look familiar to you for the equation of a line. Maybe from algebra one, you may recall that the equation for you know, a line was y equals mx plus b, right? This is from algebra. And this is what we consider, you know, the equation of alliance statistics. Now it's the same form, but the var variables are swapped, right? So M takes the place of, or B takes the role of M here, and B in the algebra equation takes the role of A. Uh, a takes the role of B in the statistics equation. So, um, you know, basically a variable swap. Um, and the reason why we do this for statistics, A plus BX, uh, is because whenever you include this for quadratics, you would include a C term attached to this. So you can extend this to more terms if you were to do like um, expand this regression technique. So if we were to do like quadratic, we can do plus C X squared and so on. And we can continue using the alphabet. So this is why they do this in statistics. However, in any case, the B is the slope of the line and a is the y-intercept of the line all right so now let's look at an example where we use the regression line to make a prediction so everyone knows that cars and trucks lose value the more miles they're driven can we predict the price of a ford f-150 if we know how many miles it has on the odometer a random sample of 16 ford f-150 super crew 4x4s was selected from among those listed for sale at autotrader.com. The number of miles driven and the price in dollars were recorded for each of the trucks. Here's a scatter plot of the data along with the regression line uh, that is given where X is equal to miles driven and Y is the price. Predict the cost of a Ford F-150 that has been driven 100,000 miles. So we got our equation and this is the scatter plot for the data. So it looks like the uh, the 
the linear trend here is pretty strong. There seems to be a strong relationship between the miles driven and the price, a, a strong uh, negative linear relationship, you know, or at least moderate to strong. So uh, with this regression line, we want to be able to predict uh, what the price would be for 100,000 miles. So using our equation, 100,000 miles is the number of miles driven, so that's our x value. So we're going to take that x value, we're going to plug it in here into our linear regression uh, prediction. So you have 38,257 minus 0.1629 times 100,000. Now if we do that, uh, this this number here, 100,000, 2, 4, has five zeros. So I know I'm going to move this over five decimal places to the right. And I get that. And then I simply uh, subtract the two numbers. Now if I subtract those, I get $21,967. So... In the beginning, it started out $38,257 with no miles driven, straight out of, you know, brand new car, straight out of the lot. And then as soon as you drive 100,000 miles on it, you know, the price drops dramatically to, you know, 21,967, the value of the car. All right, so now using the same equation, can we predict the price with 300,000 miles driven? Right, so we're going to use the same equation here. So we have y hat equals 38,257 minus 0.1629 times 300,000. And now in this case, we have negative $10,613. All right, well, that's that's an absurd price, right? So you're, it's negative 10,000, it's below zero dollars. So we know that this can't be right. Now, the reason why this prediction is incorrect is because we just performed an extrapolation. An extrapolation is a prediction that is based off of values outside of the range that we have, values that we have uh, in our data. So 300,000 miles, if you look back at the graph, uh, we don't have anything remotely near 300,000 uh, 300, miles for our data that we collected. And so this, therefore, this is not very accurate. All right, so as we mentioned earlier, this value, this prediction is an extrapolation. So extrapolation is the use of a regression line for a prediction far outside the interval or range of x values used to obtain the line. Such predictions are often not accurate. So you know, the range of values that we have is between, you know, like say zero to this part right here to about maybe 150,000 miles. So anything, any prediction outside of that range of values is going to be an extrapolation. So on, on this side, this is going to be an extrapolation if you're outside of that window. If you're inside this window, it's an interpolation. So an interpolation is, you know, you're trying to make predictions inside of your data points. Okay, so prediction inside interval of x values. As opposed to extrapolation outside. All right, so um, as we uh, said, uh, you know, extrapolations are not accurate at all, right? However, interpolations are also not completely accurate. So regardless of the prediction that you make, it's not going to be perfect, right? Uh, because it's hard to, there's going to be variation in real world data, right? That it's just not perfectly modeled. So this is why we have regression lines to estimate it as, as accurately as possible. So the errors in our prediction is called the residual. So residual is the difference between the actual value of y and the value of y predicted by the regression line. So the equation of the residual is our actual y value minus 
And when we, when we mean by actual Y value, we mean like from the data point. So this is from the data. And then minus the predicted uh, Y value. Now the predicted Y value is Y hat, which is based off of the regression line. So the predicted is based off of the regression uh, line. So in this case, our residual can be written as y minus y hat, where y hat is your predicted uh, value, y is your actual value. All right, so let's talk about uh, residuals and calculating residuals. So don't you hate it when you open a can of soda and some of the contents spray out of the can? Two students wanted to investigate if tapping on a can of soda would reduce the amount of soda expelled after the can has been shaken. For their experiment, they vigorously shook 40 cans of soda and randomly assigned each can to be tapped for 0 seconds, 4 seconds, 8 seconds, or 12 seconds. Then, after opening the can and cleaning up the mess, the students measured the amount of soda left in each can in milliliters. Here is the scatter plot along with the regression line where X is the tapping time and Y is the amount of soda remaining. All right, so what we wanna do is first calculate the residual for the can that was tapped for four seconds and had 260 milliliters of soda remaining. All right, so we have our you know regression equation. They gave that to us. So let's look at Let's look at the actual Y value first. So let's find the Y value for tapping for four seconds. Uh, it says, and it had 260 milliliters of soda remaining. Okay, so we're looking at the data point where we had 260 milliliters for four seconds. So we're looking at this data point, right? Right here. That's the one that we're interested in. So the actual Y is 260 milliliters. And the y hat, we're going to have to calculate that. So the equation that they gave us was 248.6 plus 2.63x. All right, so we're going to plug in for 4 seconds. So x is equal to 4. So we got 248.6 plus 2.63 times 4. And so our y hat is equal to 0. Point, uh, let's see, not, uh, it should be bigger than that, 259.12 uh, milliliters. All right, so now we're ready to calculate the residual, which we said was y minus y hat. So we have 260 minus 259.12. And so our residual is positive 0 0.88 milliliters. So this means that if it's you know 0 0.88 milliliters, this means we underestimated in our prediction. Okay, so we underestimated here. So if the residual is greater than zero, which means positive, uh, we underestimated. If the residual is less than zero, we overestimated. If the residual is equal to zero, this means that we had a perfect prediction. So we predicted uh, perfectly. Okay, so based off of the different you know, data points, you're not always gonna predict this perfectly. So you can imagine that most of the time, the residuals will not be zero. Most of the time, the residuals will be, <clears throat> they might be close, they may be small, they may be close to zero, but most of the time they won't be exact. <clears throat> All right, so if we look at part B, interpret the residual from part A. So if we were to put this in context, then we would say that this can, the one that we were looking at, 
had 0.8 milliliters more soda remaining than expected. So now we're going to look at, we're going to, you know, revisit the regression line equation, which we said was y hat equals a plus bx. And we said earlier that a is the y-intercept and b is the slope. So the y-intercept is the basically the value of y, which is y, you know, the y hat, when x is equal to zero. So a is when, okay, so a is the y hat when x equals zero. And then the slope b describes the change in the y for each one unit increase in the x. So remember that the slope was equal to rise over run, right? And the rise is the change in the y value. So change in y over change in x. So when x changes by one unit, y changes by a certain amount, and that's our slope. All right, so let's look at uh, interpreting our regression line. In the preceding example about tapping on cans, we found that the regression line was given by the equation earlier, 248.6 plus 2.63x, where x is the tapping time and y is the so amount of soda remaining in milliliters. Interpret the slope of the regression line. All right, so our slope here is so our slope is our B, which is 2.63. Okay, so uh, in this case, we wanna be able to interpret this, right? So if we were to interpret this, we would say that the predicted amount of soda remaining in a can so a soda remaining increases by 2.63, this is our slope that we got, 2.63 milliliters for every one second increase in the tapping time. All right, there's our slope. So now let's let's uh, let's write down the y-intercept. So the y-intercept here is 248.6 milliliters, and it says, does the value of the y-intercept have meaning in this context? If so, interpret the y-intercept. If not, explain why. So if we look at you know the meaning of the y-intercept, well, this is when x is equal to zero, right? So when x is equal to zero, that means that the can has been tapped for zero seconds. Basically, it hasn't been tapped at all. So if it hasn't been tapped at all, does it make sense that the volume will be 248.6 milliliters, the amount remaining? So um, it does have meaning because it is possible to tap a can for zero seconds, meaning you're not tapping it at all. So it does make sense in that, in that uh, respect. And so uh, this y-intercept actually has meaning in this context. So we're going to say the y-intercept has meaning because it's possible to tap a can for zero seconds if it's tapped for zero seconds the predicted amount remaining 
is 248.6 milliliters. All right, so we talked about predicting. Now let's talk about how uh, the least squares regression line. How do we come up with a good regression line? If, um, so if you were to draw a regression line, you may have a different line that you draw that you drew compared to your neighbors compared to the one that I drew. So in order to for us to agree on a good regression line, we want to use the least squares regression line. So this is the line that minimizes the errors or the residuals and makes them as small as possible. So that way the correlation coefficient R can be as high as possible. So this is why we use the least squares regression line. So as we mentioned, the least squares regression line is the line that makes the sum of the squared residuals as small as possible. So if you look at the bottom scatter plot, the bottom left, these, these um, bars are error bars, residual bars, okay? And they tell you the distance between the predicted value and the actual value. And we said that the, dif the difference between those two values is the residual. So this is a positive residual. And right here we have a negative residual, which means we underestimate, we, um, we overestimated for the negative residual. For the positive residual, we underestimated. So now that we have those residuals, if you look closely here, these residuals end up canceling each other out. So if you were to add up these residuals, they cancel out. So the sum of the residuals is equal to zero, or approximately zero anyways. So if you're trying to design a line of best fit, uh, you don't want the, the sum of the residuals to add up to zero because you wanna figure out a way to say, hey, how do I minimize the residuals? And if you add them up and you get zero, there's no way that you can tell what the true error is, right? So, and we know that there's error here. There's a lot of error in this li uh, linear regression line. How do we quantify that? So to quantify that, uh, you're gonna have to make the numbers positive. So any, any residuals that are negative, like this one here, that's a negative residual. If you square it, it automatically becomes a positive residual. And then the sum of the residuals is no longer equal to zero. And it's actually greater than zero, right? So, so it's actually greater than zero. And that's actually telling you the error that is involved in this line. And then therefore, now that we know the error, we can actually use that to minimize it and um, come up with an equation for the line of best fit. All right, so what is this equation? So we can calculate the equation of the least squares regression line using means and standard deviations of each variable as well as the correlation coefficient. So the regression line equation, remember, is y hat equals a plus bx. So our job is to find a and b. So the equation for b is given by this. Notice that it has the correlation coefficient r in the equation. And remember that to calculate r, this is from lesson 2-3, we take the sum of the z, the z scores for x and y when we multiply them, divided by n minus 1. All right, and then to calculate the z's, remember that we said that the zx is x minus x bar over uh, sx, and then zy is y minus y bar over sy, and then over n minus one. So that's how we went about calculating r. So sometimes you're gonna need to calculate r, and sometimes they'll give it to you. Sometimes you'll, they'll also give you the standard deviations. All right, so the y-intercept a is given by y bar minus b x bar. So let's, let's go over the symbols real quick just to make sure. So we said that r is the correlation coefficient So SX is the sample standard uh, deviation for X. 
uh, for the explanatory variable. So x is the explanatory variable. Sy is the sample standard deviation for y, which is the response variable. X bar is the mean or average for x, and y bar is the mean or average for the y values. All right, so we got everything here, just to kind of recap that. So once you find the b for the slope equation, you're going to plug that in to get a in the y-intercept equation. All right, so now that we got the equation, let's go ahead and uh, make use of it. So in the previous example, we used tapping time to predict the amount of soda remaining in a vigorously shaken can. For these cans, the mean tapping time was six seconds. So the mean tapping time is six seconds, and that's our x bar. So x was our tapping time. So x bar is six seconds with a standard deviation of 4.53 seconds. So that means our standard deviation for tapping time is 4.53 seconds. Uh, the mean soda uh, remaining, so that's our y bar, 264.45 uh, milliliters uh, with a standard deviation of 12.92 milliliters. So the correlation between tapping time and soda remaining, r, is 0.924. Find the equation of the least squares regression line for predicting the amount of soda remaining uh, from tapping time. All right, so if we want to, we want to actually calculate this. We're going to need our equation for b. So our equation for b is r times s y over s x. They give us our r value 0.924. We have our SY, 12.92 over 4.53. So then our B here is 2.64. We calculate our A, which is Y bar minus B X bar. So 264.45 minus B times X bar. In that case, we have 248.61. So then our regression equation is y hat equals a plus bx. So then if you plug it in, 248.61 plus 2.64x. And if you recall, this is the actual regression equation that was introduced in the beginning of that example with the tapping time. So that was the one that we used earlier. All right, guys, I hope this lesson made sense. And um, next time we're going to be talking about 2-5, which is assessing a regression model. So we'll be, you know, talking about more about residuals and, and residual plots and, and the like. All right, I hope you, um, you learned something from this lesson, and I'll see you in the next video.